What's up, y'all? So in this video, we have a lock straight from Hawaii, a mortise lock that was sent in because they could not find anybody locally to service the lock. I'm not sure what's going on. They sent me pictures of it with it opened up, but it was so gooed up and you couldn't really tell, you know, what the problem was. So we diagnosed it kind of over email and he went ahead and sent it in to us. Oh, a, a viewer, I guess, here on YouTube. So thanks for that. And also thanks for this. I'd like to point out to all, all the other customers who want to send in stuff that it is, uh, this is, this was a great, uh, awesome surprise. We had some macadamia nut chocolate bark and some fresh, lightly salted macadamia nuts. And we have decided that lightly salted in Hawaii is pretty, pretty heavy compared to everywhere else. Uh, and those are like super fresh. So those were awesome gifts. So all you who want to send in locks to get, you know, repaired, just take that as a cue. But anyway, let's, uh, let's take it apart and see what's going on with it. So I don't have a whole lot of time this morning um, because I've got several jobs scheduled, but I am going to go ahead and kind of diagnose this to see exactly what needs to be done and uh, ascertain the condition of it. So what we have, you're missing the face of it. This is actually a pretty interesting lock and it looks to be sergeant cylinder in there. Yeah. It's a mortise lock with no face on it. So we're going to, oh my goodness. My goodness, this is, uh, this has definitely seen better days. Now, I'm assuming over in Hawaii, you have a lot more corrosion problems. Only, only makes sense. We have a lot of things that need to be uh, cleaned up here. Got some of the green. This is fresh corrosion from Hawaii, y'all. In case you ever wonder what Hawaiian corrosion looks like, that would probably be it. And, oh, ooh, ooh, mortise lock. Oh, no. Our mortise lock in pieces. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The horrible mortise lock in pieces. Okay, that is all we have. Let us see what we've got going on here. Obviously, this is all just superficial. Nothing really wrong with that except needing uh, good coats of lubricant so we can pretty much leave this for last. Let's move this out of the way. Got to get a bend just for that. The cylinder is really, really, really not working at all. Feels like it wants to. Oh. Uh, and when I pull the key in and out, I mean, there is, there is nothing going on with those pins. So they're probably all frozen up. Which obviously needs some lubricant, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Let's see, the main problem, main problem here is let me start something over here. I'm recording something else over here. All righty. Oh, me. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. All parts are important. He did mention something about a tiny spring, so I'm going to make sure before we go any further what's going on here. Uh, alrighty, well... We're definitely gonna have to figure out how to get it back together, right? The 
Definitely needs cleaning up. You mentioned the problem was the handle was uh, was sticking real bad, so that immediately makes me look at the hubs right here to see what's going on. Make sure there's no wear on it. Or see what kind of wear. There's always going to be wear on them. They don't look too bad. Honestly, y'all, I think this is just a matter of uh, cleaning it up. We still have spring tension down here. Looks like, what's going on with that? That is, this, this twisty thingy right here. Something's going on with that spring for sure. Um... But the first order of business is definitely going to be... Thank goodness that clip's there, right? First order of business is definitely going to be... <sighs> cleaning it all up. And uh, we're going to have to strap on rubber gloves for that. Uh, we do have a bunch, of, a bunch of extra parts here that we're going to have to figure out. This is why it ended up in my hands. All right, so the miscellaneous screws we don't need are the mounting screws. Good there. That holds the mortise lock in the door. Uh, this goes up here to hold your cylinder in. Goes up there somewhere. Okay, this is going to be one of our trim screws, but not with that. So we got trim screws. That was, that's what holds. That's what holds that in. Ooh, okay, so it is trim screws. Look how that's held on with set screws. Ew, me, we're missing, okay, there's a set screw right there, okay. So, that means the ferrules, which that's these things, they do go through that. So we're gonna put this there, this there, put that back in the bag. We have our case front screws right there. That holds the case together. This is uh, another screw that's probably not needed simply because it's a uh, thumb turn. So there's no, you don't really need two, but we're gonna put it back. This is the dead latch part, which would go somewhere in there. Uh, and this is a little bracket. We gotta figure out where that little bracket goes. It may go on the other end of this. This screw is a red screw that is probably used to change the hand. Uh, don't know, we're gonna have to figure that one out. Oh, there's three of them. Three, of, okay, now, ah, here we go. Okay, this holds the face on. That's the face plate right here, so we're good there. These hold the mortise lock case together. So those are separate. And uh, then we have a, a little bitty pin. That's what we got to figure out. Where that little bitty pin went. What it's for, what it does. Uh, and this looks like just a spacer that probably goes somewhere. Yeah, probably right there. It's, or down, maybe down here. Yeah, maybe so. Oh, the spring, that's what that is. Shoot. Shoot. There's our broken spring, which likely went down here somewhere, which is the hub spring, which is why you'd be having a problem with it. So let me get photos of this. It's always important to get, even though it's not really correct yet, we're going to go ahead and get photos. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and repackage it up safely so that I can come back and work on it. We're gonna have to take a break so I can go work work. Okay, I've got it all boxed up. Put it back in this little box down there because I'm not gonna be here and I don't want anything to happen to it. So I've got to run out and rekey a whole bunch of houses and put in a, a whole bunch of lock. And I'm just tired and cold. I don't wanna 
Mm. But I guess I got out.
Uh, this would be the underside of the handle. Handle would be on the door like so. Uh, so we're going to test a couple of methods. We're going to try the same thing that we used to clean the other with. Uh, but we're going to do it on one of these little inconspicuous spots where it would be not showing. Uh, but most of this is, is actually grime. You can, you can actually scrape it off. But we don't want to scrape it because that actually scrapes into the metal. And as I was looking closer at them... I already saw some little marks right here. This is from shipping. They were they were hitting, I guess, either that or that happened prior, but they were together. And I think what happened is they nicked into each other, unfortunately. So there are a few little few little marks here that once we get it cleaned off are gonna be a little bit more noticeable, unfortunately. So that's gonna be the disadvantage in cleaning it off, as you can be able to see. Uh, the marks a little bit better. The face plates are not bad. They have a nice patina on them, but they do have some of that gunk. So I'm curious as to see what happens when we uh, clean this off. This is Sergeant 81. There's our there's our only marking. All right, so here we go. Well, it seems to be doing a fairly nice job. It's a little slow going, but I don't want to take too much of the uh, actual finish off. I'll hold it up next to another one and see kind of where it's going there. Most of this is algae, I think. Uh, but once it gets back on the door, <laughs> it will, uh, it'll darken up again pretty quick. We can see that's slowly coming off just doing that. Several, several layers of algae there. Oh, well, wow. that's still kind of a goldy brown color. Goldy brown. <laughs> Had to get a little bit more aggressive on the underside because of the caked on algae uh, and unfortunately that causes that however it is on the underside of the handle so unless you get down on the ground and look up it won't matter and again 
I know some people are like, oh my goodness, look at the difference. I'm going to do this faceplate too, and the other handle. But overall, while it did get a little bit lighter, it's still got a lot of the dark qualities left in it. Uh, but you can see the big difference there. <laughs> that algae is just going to continue to get worse and worse build up so it's best to go ahead and bite the bullet while it's off the door and begin its life anew even though it will not be as dark brown as it once was a little bit more of a copper color that's why they call this 10b kind of a living finish it's always been one of those things when, when it was brand new it was you know aura bronze and over time certain areas of the handle would get faded down like that. So it's lighter than this. And, uh, you know, for a while that splotchy is good, but when you have this heavy algae coat or whatever this is, green mold algae, I'm gonna assume it's algae because it's a coastal environment. Uh, but you can just deal with it because here in a few years after he gets it on back on the door, and uses it for a few years, the outside will definitely darken back up. Uh, the inside, not so much, but at least it'll be clean. And the layers will not, it can begin new layers instead of just adding on to the existing layers. So that's pretty much it with this one side. I'm going to go do a, a couple of real jobs real quick come back and do the rest this was our this was our test and this is how it turned out doesn't look bad looks way better okay y'all we've got everything cleaned up i'm gonna go ahead and move aside some of the pieces that i don't need quite yet and we are gonna put this guy back together. Uh, let's see, these can go last. Now that's it, except for the screws for the face of it. All right, um, now I did, when I cleaned it up, this, this was left. I did wire brush a little bit of the rust off the top, but uh, this is not really hurting anything. Um, so I didn't want to take it down to the bare metal like we see here and get this, uh, whatever, this zincish, goldish, however they treat the inside of these cases. I didn't want to open that up to further corrosion. So it's fine like it is. It's slick. And uh, as we go, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with lock shot in most places. I'm going to go ahead and start off with this and check these parts that did not come off. There's no point taking it off when they're peened on like that. And we're going to go through and try to figure out how to put it back together. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, number one, we do have to, if we remember back, there were a couple of things wrong with it at first. Um, and to get this off and on, the toggle for the bottom, we do have to uh, have the plate off. Uh, and we need to make sure we're putting the plate on correctly. So let's see. It's gonna go, go like that. That'll give room for the toggle. And the bolt would go through that, yes. So it's gonna go on just like that. Uh, but first we need to hook this, this, and possibly this on before we put the face plate on. So let's get a screwdriver. And this hooks in to a little roll pin, uh, just like that. Okay. I'll take it, slide it up. I wanna make sure that roll pin's pressed in all the way too, because if that comes out, that'll be a little problematic. And we'll get our spring. Let's see if we can do this all in one swift motion here. Okay. 
Nope. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So, the spring is on the wrong side of that. Get on that side. Okay, there we go. Nope, and it came off. Alright, let's snap it back in. Okay, there we go. Now it's got tension on it. Now we can go ahead and put this on. With a screwdriver here. Uh, I'm going to come back at the end of this. Because these screws can get loose and I'm going to put Loctite on. But for right now, since we may have to take it off and on a couple of times, we're just going to not do it. From the factory, they had red Loctite, and I would definitely not do that. So, get those holes lined up, and... I was going to do this silent and do a voiceover, but I hate doing voiceovers, y'all. Uh-oh, I dropped a part. Okay, so we need to go out. We need to go out even further. Gotta hold, uh, gotta hold a little tension back on that. Oh, come on. Let's loosen this side and see if that'll go on better. Ah, there we go. Maybe. <laughs> Stumped at the very beginning, y'all. There we go. Stumped by a couple of screws. Okay. Now, let's see, there's a couple of different mechanisms. I've got all these laid out, kind of how they're supposed to go on, but this really needs to go on first. And if we remember the spring for this was incorrect when I got it. So this goes here. This is the annoying little part when you lock the door. Uh, it pulls this back, if we look down there once it's spring loaded basically it is falling into this so that when you throw the deadbolt it toggles it back and forth uh, and a lot of people don't like that it drops down and catches so in theory you could remove that <laughs> In theory, you could, but we're not going to. Okay, was there a clip there? I don't think so, but let's see where that clip was. I believe it. I believe it was. Holds that down. And then we had the two springs. Now they were kind of wrapped around each other, but again, uh, one of them was incorrect. I'm going to put this one underneath because it's so much finer. Uh, and it hooks into that and then wraps around with the little hook part. Oh. right there and the hook comes around and fastens in just like that and then falls in the groove so that would be that would be correct for that and then the 
this other spring uh, was initially wrapped around this post like so but that is incorrect actually and again I don't know if they were double wrapped on top of each other for a reason I honestly think this was supposed to be double wrapped around it so that this spring will hold this one down and keep it in position so what we're going to do there is release this bring this in okay just like that and and bring this one down on top of it and around um, so basically what I'm thinking is since this has a little hook under it and this doesn't this is going to keep this from rising up and uh, when we got it the other spring was wrapped all the way around this when in actuality it goes to the plate that was missing so okay got that done we're gonna assume that's right right now uh we can do the part that dropped uh-oh uh -oh. we're gonna have to clean off the part that fell on the floor and uh that would go this way it's spring loaded it's pretty tight so that falls in here and we're gonna give it a push ah! And it's not going to hold in place until we put the cover on, so we're going to have to re-push that. Uh, next, we have the hubs that the spindle goes through. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like this. But now I'm going to go ahead and hit us with another layer of lubricant. That. And then we have the brass ring here holds them together and then the outer no big deal no big deal no big deal it remains to be seen whether this is supposed to be bent or not I feel like it's not but it may be uh, because it goes like so, and basically, I guess we'll pull this back. So in a way, I think it may be supposed to be bent. Don't know for sure. Don't know for sure. We're gonna move this back into this position because the spring that's broken goes right there. Uh, and then this clip would go onto the bottom of it. So let's slide that down. I think we can go ahead and clip this one on. Clip. Okay, now we have somewhat of a difficult thing going on, I believe. Let's go ahead. No, let's not. Mm, I don't know if we should put that on first or not. This plate was fully not on, the, on it at all when I got it. So, I kind of had to figure this out. I was not sure where this plate went because it was sent loose, but it goes pretty much just like that. And here our spring wraps around this part right there. And that's what gives that spring motion. So, I'm pretty sure that's how it's supposed to go. It actually may wrap around and go on top of that one. To hold that side down. I'm not overly sure about that. We're going to get it together and see how it acts though. Uh, Alright, so the bolt assembly has several pieces that we need to get together. That kind of went like that. Remember, this goes up into the middle of this, and I think. 
now we need to go ahead and put our ferrule on. Ferrule right there. I think it went on this side and pushed. Because it could go really, honestly, either side. I'm not sure about that one. through and this goes I think this goes like uh, okay yeah uh, but we need to nope not yet click click Turn the cylinder, and that does what? I don't know. That on. Hard part is this is the hard part. This is the hard part. So that would push that out when you turn the thumb turn. So push that all the way out. This goes in there. This goes on top. Um. But before we do that, let's get this guy in here. Uh, and it's bent upwards, so. There we go, there we go, there we go. And there we go. So again, I think it does this. Will that go out all the way? Oh, went out too far. Okay, so that pushes that back, which retracts the latch. Okay, so that's when it's uh, using it in the latch function. All right, let's go ahead. I may shift cameras here. Let's see if we can get a better view of this, because this part is kind of a balancing act. We've got two upper and two lower. Two that are attached to that, and then this one that is not. We're going to put that there. We need to bring our spring in. That pushes against that, I assume. Oh, oh yeah, it does. It does. Okay, hold on. I got ahead of myself there. Let's get this tensioned in there correctly. Click into position. Okay, just click into position. There, but our bar here is is not right, so we need to fix that. That needs to be on the other side. Yes, that's uh, okay. Back into position. Click. Okay, so I think this is correct. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this one down. Uh, uh, push this all 
all the way down. All right, so this pen is probably going to be one of the most troublesome parts because it looks like that spring. Oh, wait. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Hey, hey that may help. All right, balance it there. Uh, make sure that is correct. That is correct. And drop this down here. So this has to go in this hole. Those, hey, it went together immediately. What's, something's wrong with this scenario. Something's not right. Something's, something, something's not right about that, y'all. Basically, the spring it and, and doing anything worthwhile. So I'm assuming the spring goes on this side, which would explain that heavy wear right there. Oh man. So it goes like this. Oh, yep. That definitely explains the heavy wear on that one pin. And almost like they made this pin replaceable because of that. Which is why it's not peened on, maybe. Like the other two are. I don't know. I don't know. Get up here. Get in there. Yep. Get right there. You. You come over here. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a tough one. Throw that out, move this up. You know what, I'm gonna flip this pin around at this point, since that does have that wear I'm pressing in on it. Da, da, da. Come on off, thank you. Let's see what the easiest way to do this is gonna be. Honestly, there is no easy way to do it. Uh, but I have an idea. Don't know if it'll work, but it's an idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Alright, and let's get you where you're supposed to be now. That's putting a lot of pressure on that little guy, I guess. You're in. You're still not in down here. All 
almost yeah oh there you go okay are you in are you in i think everybody's in oh, ah, now we're in uh uh clip find a clip quickly find the clip Use the face cap pliers for what they're intended for. Ah, clip. Okay. Uh, now let's let this go. Hey. And turn back. Come back. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was handy. And it's also not going to hold real still until we get the face cap on. Let's go ahead and put this back, which again, that's going to push that kind of out of the way. Uh, uh -huh. Spacer. Spacer. I don't know what that hole's in there for. And we went back to see which way this was because I'm not at the door. One of these screws is frozen solid, so I need to make sure that is correct. So I will go back on my video over that. In the very beginning, I checked this. One of the things that happens is this breaks off. So while I was twisting it in the beginning, I was also checking to make sure it's straight. Okay, just throw it down there, Jason. Uh, and still looking good, and it is. So we're going to bring that, make sure that the tabs go on the back side of all these. Like that, there we go. And that's it. Except for putting those on the outside parts, but uh, the spring that we're missing, the spring that was broken, uh, I've not located an exact one, but I've gone through a few of my things and I think I'll be able to make possibly one of my other ones uh one just a substitute that'll work and that spring goes here and, and keeps this when it turn when you turn your lever that's the lever assist that lets that snap back into position real well and again a few of these pieces and parts will not stay still until the cap's on there and I have absolutely no idea what this does. I'm assuming by its placement that this part toggles this. Uh, but I don't know where that goes. But uh, this part extends right to where that would be. I just don't really understand the part about this it's too big of a diameter for that hole that's a screw hole so i'm not sure what role it plays uh maybe maybe the dead latch hits it this part hits it maybe i don't know uh, but we got to get a spring for it so until then uh, we'll be right back
well, let's see how they came out. Still a little green on the outside here. And it's still some paint, but I got some of it off. A little bit of green. It's okay. We still got one little one little round to go. Uh, and using the uh, the pick like you're supposed to. Hook picks make great scrapers, right? Did not harm the metal, didn't scratch the metal, but was able to get it off a lot quicker than just using the soft brush. We do have a, uh, oh, there's some more green down here. Okay, we're going to try actually a metal polish too, um, but we did have a little set screw here that we need to deal with a little bit. Right now I'm just going to get them dry so that we can see where we need to go from this point. Handle, other handle that we did before. This was the outside handle, so it's gonna naturally be a little bit darker. And these are gonna darken up really quick too once they put them back on the, on the door. They're exposed to the weather for about a week. They're gonna, they're gonna instantly get dark again, so any highlights that you see will not be around for long. This one was tough. This is on the edge of the door, so it's not that big of a deal, but I'm probably going to use this as our test sample. I'm going to try this mass metal polish. Um, this is expensive as heck. This is a two ounce container and uh, expensive, expensive as heck. So we're going to see how it what it does but it lists all metals even doorknobs firearms so we're gonna we're gonna see what this is a little tube I'm gonna see what it does let's see what it does um, pokey yuppie and uh, squeezy Ah, there we go. I didn't read the directions, but let's see what it does. Probably smear it on and let it sit for a minute. Kind of dangerous doing the whole thing, but we're going to do it. It's just the edge of the door, so even if it's light, be okay. Should have kept my gloves on for this one though. All right, so typically with this kind of stuff, you have to let it dry for a sec. Let's we'll see what it says. Wipe on, wipe off. Apply sparingly, wipe surface. Do not let polish dry. Do not let polish dry. <laughs> That's a good warning, huh? I guess I was thinking like turtle wax or something. Uh, you know, it didn't really do a whole lot to be as expensive as it is. It did not miraculously get it clean. It did a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's the uh, most awesome thing out there. I could probably use Brasso and achieve the same results. Honestly, I've used Bresso tons over the years, and uh, it seems to be about the same as that. A little rough right there, a little rough. A little rough. Uh, we need to apply a little bit of water. Fiji water to clean some Hawaiian locks, right? That all makes sense. 
in Mississippi. <laughs> All of that makes sense. Starting to come down on the uh, dark bronze finish, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna push this anymore. Definitely still has a coating of algae. But it's gonna, I'm gonna leave it with some character. So we got it back together. I'm gonna set it aside. We have a couple of little housekeeping items to tend to. Springs and the interior trim. So this is kind of a concealed mounting system in that we have the thumb turn on the inside and at the top and bottom, We've got these little set screws Let's see right there. Oh, okay. So one came out, which is right here. And the other one is, uh, he said, sent me an email saying it was stripped out, which it is. So it is one of those things where I'm going to try heat number one in this area hopefully to break up whatever's going on i'll let it soak let it soak overnight and uh what i might have to end up doing is get a metric one that's a little bit bigger and grind it down and hammer it in to the uh hammer it into it and then try to get it out we just need to get it out not worried about the condition of the screw but let's see if heat does it hurting anything else. Oh, I don't think it's turning at all. Let's try the next larger size standard and then I may have to go modify an Allen wrench to fit in there. Ooh, it's hot. All right, so I'm gonna go get another Allen wrench, grind down the edges a little bit, hammer it in, and see if we can't get it to come out. As one does over time, collect tools. We have the Allen wrench grave. So there's the next uh, larger size in metric. Um, no. I gotta see if we can find one that's small. Unfortunately, the only problem with keeping them like this is the smallest ones fall to the very bottom and you end up having to dump it out into another thing. We need a thing. Hey, let go.
stubborn. Okay, step two, three. I think that's where this little guy might come in. That is the size we're looking for. It actually clean those threads. been carrying these around for a couple of days in my pocket should be 
just the size we need to replace them. And they're stainless steel as well, which helps against corrosion. Sweet. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're not gonna put them in there. We're gonna put them in a little bag and we're gonna also put a little bit of Loctite on them. But for right now, so we don't lose them, let's just go ahead and put them in. Sweet. Let's go ahead and sink that down because I'm still, still working on the finish on this one. There we go. And there we go. Because this one uh, didn't come out as nice as I really wanted it. Still got a little green up there. Handles came out really nice. And uh, the front is going to be just dark. It's still got a little corrosion. That metal polish I had didn't work well. Uh, but in the meantime, now we're going to talk about springs. On to the springs. Spring, 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 spring. So uh, going around, you can go to any, just go to a hardware store and get a spring, they say. Just go to the hardware store and get a spring. Well, it's not that easy. There's different springs. True. Hardware stores, Home Depot, places like that. If you're overseas, I guess that place called Bunnings or whatever. Places like that have springs. Almost all of them are compression or extension springs, and they are not torsion springs. Torsion springs work differently, and we will, in fact, look at an older model, an even older model of this guy that had a compression spring that actually, this is the exact part. You notice it has a thicker, ooh, thicker wall than this does. It also had a uh, cutout, a little round indention in the case right here to hold that steady. This one does not, so we can't just switch this out with the older one and this would maybe work, but since there's nowhere for the compression spring to stay, it would uh, slip around, so we, we can't use this one because it doesn't have the little cutout in the case to hold it. So when you go to the hardware store, you come back with the one choice that they had, and this is Hillman brand. This is the spring that's out of there. And uh, so the, the thing with springs is uh, several things. Number one, wire gauge. We see it's automatically really thick. This spring has to go underneath this little, there's a little bitty lip right there. You see how it goes under? And that catches right there. This gauge is too thick. Also, the gauge makes it really hard. So we see we have, I don't really have a pound tester, but kind of use your finger. And then when you try to do this, it's like, it's super hard. So that's going to be, that's out of the, that's out of the question already. I scavenged some out of some of the older mortise locks that I used, that I have. This one is actually a lighter gauge. Uh, and it's just a little too springy. I'm, I, I may be able to get it to work. And another thing is the handing. Here's another one that came out. So here's how you hand a spring. If you hold your hand out like this, like this is your right hand, and you do this, you just kind of hold your hand like that. See, the, these would represent the coils. This would be the leg of the spring. Coils, leg. Like this would be the other one. So that's right hand. And we hold these up next to each other. Let me see, this is a left hand. So hold it like that, coils that way. So that is a right hand versus left hand spring. So number one, we need the right hand spring for it to go into there and catch. Uh, number two, none of these that I have really are gonna work, number one, because this is a left hand. I don't know, 
may be able to, no, it's gotta be right hand. So that led me on an entire quest to find a spring without having to order it. I did order one about a week ago from a company, but it ended up being just not right. So then I was like, you know what? These use compression springs. However, that little pin right there is, uh, that spring center is a very small diameter. It needs to be at least this little, what, whatever, whatever this is, quarter inch looks like. So on an epic quest to find springs, I finally discovered this little guy. So let's take it apart and see if this is gonna work. 79 cents. And you know, out of these things, I've never ever, I've got tons of these little clamp mechanism deals around and I've never ever ever seen a spring break in one. So, <laughs> look at that. Let's get this guy, okay. Is this, ooh, ooh, hmm. We need to take this out first and foremost. It was not time to put this one back in yet because we need to, we need to figure out how this spring is gonna work on here. Okay, that means we're gonna have to lift up the latch for a minute, set it aside. Uh, and also, we still, you know, I don't think, let's pull the latch out of the way. Oh, and while we're at it, I had forgotten about this guy. This I put in the wrong way. That's an easy fix. Just take it out and flip it around. I don't know why I didn't catch that when I was putting them together. I mean, if the, if the bevel or if the handing of the door was that way, it would have been. But on this one, the handing is actually like that. All right, let's go down here and look. You know, that... I don't think this is supposed to be bent, honestly. Oh, that's a hard call. It may be bent, supposed to be bent, but if you look back here move this out of the way. See how it's scratching up right there? I think it's scratching up because it's bent maybe a little too much. So I'm going to go uh, put this on a vise and also there's another thing. This is where that wire goes under. As before, this is kind of how it would sit. It's uh, I guess that's what that little notch right there is for. Yeah, okay, so it goes. Uh, it goes like that, maybe? With that being on the hole, and then tight up against the wall here. There's a spacer that sets that off. Uh, but let's check and see. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Will this work though? No. No, it's too, too small a diameter. So, uh, let's check one other thing. This is a cheap hole punch from Harbor Freight. And it doesn't work really well. It does, uh, it does do a little bit. I don't know. It just doesn't work well. And I've only used it a handful of times to punch a couple of holes in belts. However, uh, the spring is what we're after. Look at that. It looks to be a quarter inch. It's only two or three coils. Let's see, is it? Right or left handed? No, it's a left handed spring and that's not good because we need a right handed. So that's not gonna work. Hey. Uh, I was able to bend out one of the coils and I think it'll be okay. 
However, it's uh, it's a matter of getting it back together. Getting it back together is going to be pretty interesting because we have to do several things simultaneously. So that would go there. This would go... down 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 okay so that would be um that would be okay except i feel like we're still i feel like we're still messing up right here let's go ahead and make this flat i don't feel comfortable doing it like that should just be a simple, simple tweak here, right? I feel like that's better. Yeah, I feel like that sits much better on it. Let's get this guy out of the way because he's just being trouble. Just be in some trouble. <laughs> mm. Oh, there it is. There it is, y'all. Ow! There it was. it was ah, it's hard on the fingertips yeah all right I feel like we need to clip that We need to, yeah, we're gonna. That doesn't seem right. Put that back 
there. Okay. Uh, we definitely have to clip the end. So let's uh, unspring that real quick. Let's see if there's maybe another way this can go on. Maybe it went on like this. And this pressed against that. Let's try that. I'm going to go clip this in real quick though because it doesn't need to be that long. All right, we are back, got it trimmed. And it may very well go, about, go like this. We're gonna, we're gonna see if this is the way it goes, because this actually may be the correct way. I don't want to have to take that out again. Oh, I am going to have to take it out again. to go shorter. Watch your eyes. That's it. Let's put this back. This goes in here. Hardest part is going to be getting all the little parts to cooperate. Everything we've done up until now has been easy. Now we are at the difficult stage. supposed to be? I don't think you are. Okay, now you are. Especially that guy. That's gonna, that guy's gonna be the hardest one to deal with, I think. Oh, missing a pen. Oh, is it together? Holy moly. See how this goes, y'all. Again, I think this little toggle needs to fall right in that. So this is kind of going to be 
difficult as well. Let's see. Please make a liar out of me and just snap right together. some various little pokey tools like this. Let's move um, this. Not sure how you got in there, but get out. holding us up. What's holding us up? Part of the way there. A little fine tuning up top. This is the one that's holding us up here. And that's got that really tight spring on it, so. This one might be the hardest. Yeah, that's definitely what it is. And there we go, pushed it forward and it fell down a little bit. Okay. Uh, we are seated all the way around, people. Now we need to get our screws just to hold it together for a minute. Which uh, looks like I have not cleaned these screws yet. Wait. Let's use... Uh, let's use these guys. Where's my Phillips head? There it is. Oh.
but now need, we don't know 100% if the, uh, if this thing was right. This one may not have been right because we really didn't have another. Yep, okay, so there we go. Turn the key, pulls that back. bolts only coming out a little bit that means that there is a little doodad in the way there's a doodad in the way of the bolt work uh, and it was likely that little pivot that we did not know which side it went on and I think that may answer the question as to which side it goes on. So, guess what? We get to do all that again. We're gonna speed it up though. I pretty quickly found the mistake. I had put this pin there and it was blocking this from going forward. In actuality, this little guy goes in this hole. There's about three different holes here it could go in, um, but it actually goes there. All right, now let's see if we can do this. Let's see if we can get this again. Everything's looking good though. Everything looks good. All right, push this guy forward. Push this forward. see what was it that was holding us up before a couple of things this one yep and then that's right that's right that's right oh oh it snapped right together beautifully beautifully i'm gonna go shine these up real quick on a uh a bench grinder though or a, a wire brush so i'll be right back for this now this clip got left out i know y'all were probably screaming it i'll probably just put a note but i did not clip down <laughs> i did not clip down underneath that spring so i'm going to try to do this without removing the spring again probably can Yes. Clip. Hey, hey, see? No parts left behind. No spare parts left behind. Everything else is shiny, so might as well make the screw heads shiny as well. good looking good okay so we are done pretty much with that uh, we still got to check the lever handles however we have a little bit of cylinder work that we have to do here because this this cylinder is not doing so good the key is not doing so good I 
let's uh let's just do a squirt real quick actually oops yeah probably should have started with that should have started with that get all the goop out of the cylinder It's actually working really well though. Watch this. Spacing and the depths are way off, way, way off. Because it's just not a very good cut key. Top pin, top pin, top pin, screw, screw. Okay, we're going to get with the customer now to see about changing this key because this is just, it's not right. Okay, we are going to see about using our original sergeant kit for this. Sometimes it's not a good idea like we've talked about to use original sergeant stuff, especially when we have one of these bad copies, but that's no big deal. So this front part is the front. Uh, the cylinder itself is in not bad condition. We've got six pins, but a five pin key. And um, so yeah, let's go ahead and populate it real quick. with original lab sergeant pins. Springs are in good shape. Uh, let's go ahead and use a new spring in the back. This does not look like a sergeant spring, but it'll be fine. It's pretty close. spring and spring and we're placing the top and bottom pins nope that's the back that doesn't get one Front needs one there. So the spacing is off really, really bad on this. first chamber. That's that little ledge right there. Uh, mm, mm, mm. We are likely going to just have to use the lab kit for this. Because that means that pen sits 
uh, right there on that ledge. And then uh, in chamber number four, one, two, three, four, uh, we also have a little bit of a pinpoint ledge, I guess you could call it. So likely the actual sergeant pins are not gonna work right. straight lab so that's probably gonna be in this range yep a little bit lower we'll go 192 yep Good and uh, probably let's go back to 219. Yep, that's what I thought. So those numbers don't really correspond with Sergeant at all. Well, 219, 5, 5, yeah. 2. Wish we could decode that, but. Smooth this silk. All right, aside from just a little bit more finish work on this, which I'm probably just going to do a coat of Houdini. And uh, this is oil rub. This is the oil rub bronze part of oil rub bronze is you, you put oil on it. Now, actually, I could go get oil oil and do the same thing. In fact, let's do that. To do that would be three in one oil, which lubricates, penetrates rust, and cleans. And it's long lasting. So we are just gonna dribble it. Ah, ow! Just a little too much. And just uh, penetrate and clean, right? Let it penetrate. The thumb turn looks a lot better. A lot, a lot better. And uh, this will pretty much wrap up this video. So thanks for sticking with us through it. So look at that green, green coming off. It does actually <laughs> clean, right? It does one thing that it says to do. 
So I'm just gonna rub on this for a little bit longer and uh, we're good to go on that. And uh, hopefully this goes and lives out its life happily for another 20 or 30 years, however old it needs to get to. That lives the door, all right? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do quite a bit of work on that. Let's go ahead and see how this turns out. And we're getting some, uh, getting some paper towel debris there. Um, let's try the better paper towel. There we go. on the door it, it can't be all the way tight because that split spindle has to actuate both sides uh, so it has to turn a quarter turn so if we if we tighten that all the way down and try to stick it through when you go and you turn the inside handle it's going to tighten or not tighten one of the two so in this case it's going to go let's see this would be the exterior and uh, if it was tightened all the way down like so when you go and you turn it it kind of grabs so instead of being you go tight all the way back it off one till it's square and then go one more revolution or one quarter turn because it's four-sided and that gives you the leeway to go down and some locks do work if you pull up most people don't pull it up but so again if it's tight that tighten down all the way like that it's not gonna work so tighten it down all the way break it like that line it up and then turn it one more quarter turn so that you have the correct action for the inside and outside it's one of the biggest problems putting them back on is getting that getting that correct but otherwise we have uh, outside trim so nope that does not go there wait which way does this go oh we did forget a part Tighten that down. Now. Okay, so we are going to go through the sequence of testing it before it gets shipped out. Thumb turn inside. Deadbolt, 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 deadbolt. Got the cylinder in. I haven't screwed it in yet, but actually you don't actually have to tighten it because it looks like it fits perfectly right in that recess. So even if the screw wasn't tight, it's not going to get loose, which is kind of awesome. Kind of awesome. Uh, let's see, this is the outside. And that kind of goes like that, like that. All right, we are locked. And unlock. Turn the thumb turn. Oh, maybe sticking in too far. There we go. Oops, still sticking in too far. There we go. All right, 
and then uh, we're going to try our inside handle. Remember, it's got to be put on the door in just the right way for it to work right. So that is unlocked. Okay, all right, there we go. And turn, 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 turn. It's locked, so let's unlock it. Turn, 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 turn. Lock, not turn. Key. In, and all right, it's in a locked position now. Unlocked, locked. And now we're going to try our key. Uh, open. Deadbolt. Undo deadbolt, latch, lock deadbolt, turn the key all the way around, it stops, unlock deadbolt, and pull the latch back. And then toggle, yep, and then uh, locked, and unlocked. Yay! It's working. It is working. This can finally go home. Okay, we got it all boxed up and sent back home. Hopefully the customer gets it quickly and gets it back on the door and it works fine for many years to come. Uh, and uh, I just noticed that I was wearing the exact same, I'm wearing the exact same sweatshirt that I was wearing when we opened the package several weeks ago, or a couple of weeks ago, whatever the case was. Uh, an extremely long video. This makes my longest video on this channel. I didn't mean to be by any means, I did try to cut a lot of, you know, narrow it down a little bit because the two hour long movie is just that, a two hour long movie. But anyway, I appreciate all y'all who have watched. Make sure and hit that like button. Uh, and uh, because we, we have spent several hours both editing and doing the actual work on the lock itself. But again, got it all cleaned up. I was pretty thrilled with how it ended up. And uh, we appreciate again, the customer for sending it in for service. If anybody who has watch this whole video or anything else and is in need of lock services where you have not been able to find a local source to assist you shoot us an email with your problem at selockandkey at gmail.com and we will try our best to help you so anyway thanks again for watching y'all make sure and hit that like button make sure and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of thing and we'll catch y'all next video